welcome to the panel to discuss the four-part ABC TV series, Making Couples Happy. All right, so let's start with an introductory clip from the series. I know that I'm strong enough to walk away if I had to, but to me, that's an easy choice because it's like saying, oh, it's all too hard. I'll start again somewhere over here. But I hadn't, hadn't fixed this. Something I've left undone. Across Australia, couples are in crisis. And you're so hard to please. Like, I can never buy the present that you like. Because you don't listen to me. Just calm down. No, but you're just so sorry. In every state, every town and every street, relationships are crumbling. I go through life feeling like I can't be the person you want me to be. I'm just not attracted to you on any levels. One third of marriages end in divorce. I don't know how we're going to make it. Science claims it can give individuals simple techniques. Right, five dollars, everybody. We need a full-on patch. To improve their relationships. <laughs> hey, well done. Clinical psychologist and relationship expert John Aiken and sex and relationship counsellor Desiree Spearings will test this theory with four couples on the brink. This is a big challenge, but there are powerful strategies that can help every relationship in crisis. We want to give them baby steps in order for them to succeed. Over the next eight weeks, they'll work with mind and body expert Anna-Louise Bouvier. If you wait any longer, you're not going to have a marriage. Together, they'll attempt to revitalise the relationships using challenges. Oh, my God. Turn to Paul and actually have a look at him. I can't. And powerful, scientifically proven techniques that have been shown to work. I'm trying my best, for God's sake. The couples will reveal vulnerabilities kept hidden for decades. That's all right, that's all right. Don't be scared of it. I will do my best to take down the wall and let, let you in. They'll receive intimate counselling. Here we've got your ideal sexual situation, if you could have it all your way. Push sexual boundaries. Paul, oh, what is it that turns you on sexually? It's strange me asking that question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. <laughs> and learn skills that will alter their lives forever. I would just like to say how much I appreciate everything you do for our children. Jennifer, let's just start. Why did you feel the need to do a making couples happy after making Australia happy? Why specifically? Uh, the ABC, I guess, as a public broadcaster, are always looking to kind of push the envelope. And even though if I was working for, uh, for a commercial network, I would have just done, rolled out the same successful formula. So they said, how will we extend the audience? How will we make a, a more challenging show? based on the same kind of science of positive psychology and mindfulness and mind-body health, uh, what would that look like? And, um, and we just sort of said, well, what's the hardest relationship? What's the most important? What's the hardest relationship? And that's got to be your intimate relationship. So why don't we do making couples happy? Mm. And the broadcaster loved that idea. And we just thought, oh, great, we've got to reinvent the wheel. This is going to be so hard. <laughs> and every time we mentioned to someone in that development phase that we were working on a show called Making Couples Happy, Without fail, everyone said, all the best. <laughs> it was really extraordinary. That re and that was responses from people who were in good relationships as well as those that weren't. And so we knew at that stage it was either the best or the worst idea we probably ever had. So the recruitment process must have been really something. And you were specifically looking for couples in crisis. Yeah, yeah, we were. I mean, the, the model was the same in some ways as the first series, which was that was eight unhappy people. Can we get them happy in eight weeks? This was four couples who, who were unhappy with, with some issues of, of their relationship. And yeah, so we looked at, we were looking at how, you know, how we could make them happy. So the casting was uh, the hardest thing that I've ever had to do. And I cast for a lot of the films that we make um, with regular people. Um, and uh, it has just never, ever been hard. I, I work with a company called A Cast of Thousands, and, and they cast everything from, we work very closely with them, but they cast everything from MasterChef to Farmer Wants a Wife, Biggest Loser, 
and she said after 15 years of a very, very successful business, this was the one that almost did her in. She said it was so hard. <laughs> and, and I remember at the time thinking, it's really extraordinary. We can cast easily enough people who at 200 kilos will run up a sand hill in a bikini or something, but we couldn't actually find very many people, luckily we found some great ones in mm -hmm. the end, uh, who would talk about their relationships. Yeah, and I think that's a really, I don't know whether it's a curiously Australian thing, but it was something we realised that was really going to be, you know, important to, mm. to look at. Very sensitive thing. Mm. So just briefly, the, the couples that you ended up with, real range of, of situations. Yeah, mm. yeah. So a range of ages, a range of circumstances. We were casting definitely for... Um, uh, all of the things that we knew were the experiences of a lot of relationships, and that was a toxic communication, uh, work-life balance, um, a lack of understanding or respect for each other's role in a relationship, parenting issues. There was a whole range of things that we were casting for, mm. and, um, and some of the... So I think for, for some of the couples that we, we did cast, we knew what we were getting, and for some we absolutely were surprised um, by what other layers and levels existed. And uh, how did you know that Lainey and Darren were the perfect. couple for you? <laughs> <laughs> uh, look, I think they were perfect because one of the things you look for in these sort of change programs, if you like, is, as, the, as my trusty team of fantastic experts tell me, um, you have to look for people who are ready for change. And you guys in this audience probably know all about that stuff. So if you want to lose weight, if you want to do anything significant in change, you have to actually be at a point to be ready for change. Certainly if we've only got eight weeks, it's television after all, uh, and, and you, know, you want change to happen. So I think these guys had an absolute underlying um, care for each other and a bond that you could tell, but they had very, very noticeable issues as well. Darren was the perfect Aussie bloke who would have had <laughs> absolute, you would have had to drag him kicking and screaming into a councillor's office uh, and would talk, you know, wouldn't talk openly, I think it's fair to say, about his relationships generally. Uh, and Lane is a fantastic feisty Kiwi and we knew we'd, we'd, she'd tell us like it was. <laughs> uh, so that was, you know, that was part yeah. of the reason. And they've got the work-life balance because they work together. Mm. So Lainey and Darren, what were you thinking? <laughs> How did you decide to do it? I believe it was a quick decision for you, Darren. <laughs> well, it was a quick decision, but of the reason um, we ended up doing it is, uh, as I said, I never, we did have issues because we worked with each other in our plumbing business and um, I never wanted to really go and get some help. I just thought we could get through it, and Lainey thought this is a great opportunity to show to get on, and it would be something that I'd do because I'd kind of find it interesting getting on a show. And to start with it, I thought I'll go along with it because it mightn't happen. And then the next minute, <laughs> I was in it. <laughs> First mistake. Yes. <laughs> and Lainey, what did you go through? Yeah, unfortunately, the decision got taken out of Darren's hands because I <laughs> applied on the quiet and. Um, <laughs> yeah, I did it just because we worked together and it was very tough to work together and we had tried to work things out ourselves but it just didn't happen and I knew that because it was a TV show that once we were on that train there was no, Darren wasn't getting off, so <laughs> that was my extreme method of getting him to go along yeah. with it. She's right. So, <laughs> so Jennifer, were you prepared that this putting people through this process might be a catalyst to separation rather than having them come closer together? Yeah, um, yes we were and it's the sort of thing that, that certainly the experts um, on, our, on our team, uh, John Aiken, Desiree Spearing and Anna-Louise Bouvier and our production team take really seriously. Um, there was a sort of a, um, 11th hour meeting with the ABC at one stage and they said, look, it's come from on high. We just want an assurance that they're all not going to divorce. Uh, can, can we get an assurance of that? And because uh, they said, we can just see, I think they'd already been to the marketing department and they'd said, we can see plastered over the billboard, you know, ABC is home wrecker. It's not gonna work, you know. And I said, look, there, there are no guarantees, but we have this expert panel, we have an enormous amount of scientific research, which we've kind of seagulled, if you like, from all of these fabulous speakers we've heard over the last two days, all mm. the best of positive psych and coaching psych and all the rest of it to try and put into this eight-week program. So the science was telling us that they would be good um, and that they would get through it and they would improve. But there is also that 
uh, I, I guess we thought, look, one of the four may find that the better path for them is not to be together. Mm. Statistically, that might happen. And that's just something that we had to be prepared for. Mm. Um, yeah. So you were using this, uh, the new science of techniques. Um, just uh, give us a quick idea of the types of techniques uh, and then we'll hear from Lainey and Darren about their experiences of going through some of them. <laughs> uh, so, yes, so we take all of the, the interventions that we think that, that science tells us that works in a whole range of areas and then we put them through the sort of TV mill, if you like, um, where they have to be uh, rigorous but they also have to be entertaining. Uh, and interesting. So we did things like um, we made them uh, kiss on this sort of lip, red lip-shaped couch in Pitt Street Mall, <laughs> uh, very public. Uh, we made them do a, write their own eulogy and then read those to us. We made them go shopping in a um, hardware store for paint tins covered in resentments. They had to pick all the resentments that they felt about their partner. And at one stage, we just didn't have trolleys big enough. Uh, John Aiken said at one point, we've got discounts for people like you. This is true. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so, so they were, it, there was a weird whack. And then, of course, my favourite, which was what we picked on these guys to do, which was the foreplay maps, where they had the stick figures, and they can tell you more about that, I'm sure. Yeah, so... Yeah. Who wants to go first? <laughs> well, mind you, we're sparing you. We were going to play a, a clip of that, but we decided to be kind. <laughs> Thank you, although 500,000 people instead. saw it. So it's kind <laughs> yes. of out there, isn't it? Um, yeah, that was probably one of the excruciating ones that we did. And, but, you know, it was helpful, <laughs> so that's nice. Um, the, <laughs> the other exercise... Do you want to explain what you did on that? Uh, uh, okay, so um, I'd love to, Jennifer. Um, there were stick figures and we had to describe our um, ultimate sexual experience. And I was very annoyed actually because they never showed that in the lead up on the telly show. So I do this elaborate 10 step process, you know, going from the head down. And, uh, and then it looked like I just, I'm this very hard work woman that takes a, a long two time. hours to warm up or something, but <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so you dot, dot through your body what you would like and then your partner does the same and you, you share it with each other so that you have actually a better understanding of what each other needs. Mm. And um, as Desiree puts it, um, men are the fire and you just flick the switch and away they go and Darren was one, two, three, four. And then, but women are the water, and they need the fire to boil, and mm. it takes a long it's time. A fascinating to get there. process. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you got anything to add, Darren? <laughs> no, she's no. covered it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, Jennifer, how are the couples now? We'll hear from Lainey and Darren in a minute. But how are they? Eighteen months down the track. Um, well, I was pretty excited that these guys agreed to come. I thought that was a good sign. Uh, they're all doing very well. So it's 18 months since we finished filming, um, and there's been some significant changes for some. So for any of you who've seen the program, um, Carla and Dom, the young, feisty Italian couple, uh, she's now, Carla's now working in the family business, so she gets to spend more time with him. She's uh, lost a lot of weight, and she's much, much healthier. Um, uh, and for Steve and Paula, uh, they're about to go and live in Singapore, um, which she's delighted about because that sounds like help for the children. <laughs> um, but yeah, so, and, uh, and Alison and Paul um, are doing very well. They've had a fantastic family holiday recently and I got a very beautiful email from them recently saying um, that things were going very well. Mm. So it's very gratifying, mm. yeah. And Darren and Lainey, how are things going now for you? Thing, things are... Uh, a, a hell of a lot better than when, what they were. Um, obviously, some, and now and again, we go back into our old steps. Just recently, we had a blue. But the thing about the whole show is our thinking's changed. So we can walk away from it and think about what we've done wrong or how we can fix it. Because um, a lot of our things was a work issue and bringing work home. And recently, we, we did have a blue and it was over work and we, we'd done the wrong thing about talking about work when we're out on a date or something. But in general, our, our life is really good now. Mm. Lainey, yep. Yeah, it, it, it certainly, it, um, it wasn't something that you could check the box, like you can't say, oh, I'm fit and healthy now, I've done that, and it's sorted. We definitely have to work hard. It's like, you know, you need to exercise every day, and it's very, 
it's both comforting and frustrating to know the answers sometimes because it's comforting that we know the way forward when we go wrong, but it's a bit frustrating when you find yourself not doing what you know works. Mm. Um, but like Darren said, it, when we get off track, we can pull ourselves back on track very quickly and we know what steps we have to take. So we are significantly happier than we were mm. when we started the show. Mm. Well, look, the time has just about run out, but we, we have to see the final clip. In the final episode, the couples were asked to write secret love letters to each other and read them out in front of the group. Uh, it was so moving, so let's see it now. The day you told me you loved me changed something in me. I never had that feeling of such joy. Just as our renovation was coming to an end, we fell pregnant. I remember you telling me at the front gate, and you're in tears of joy. Tried to finish the house as quick as we could, but our new little mate wanted to come early. The night we were in hospital and being told we have to have an emergency operation to remove our baby, I had no feeling. I must have been in shock. When they removed our Jack, I asked the doctor, is he going to be all right? And the response was, we can't give you an answer, but you need to spend time with him. I sat beside him for hours while he had wires on him, begging he stays alive so he can meet his mum. I remember saying to him, his mum is the most amazing person he'll ever meet. Jack started to get stronger, but you were getting sicker. When the doctors told me you may have to have a kidney transplant, I was heartbroken. I remember on that day I was in my work truck and just crying and thought how fucked my life would be without you. I, w I wish I had told you that at the time. Then I got the opportunity to take you to him. As I pushed you in the wheelchair to meet him for the first time, from that moment on, you both got stronger. Then finally I got to have you both at home. Then we were learning to be a family. And we then also fell pregnant to our beautiful little girl. With reflecting on how and when it became very hard, I can now see that I've been a big part of the difficulties and where I went wrong. Always wanting to make sure you took your fair share of the blame. I often felt you were wrong and I was right and I had to fight my corner. In the last weeks, I've learned so much about where I've been going wrong. Even though coming on this show has been difficult and at times downright embarrassing, I believe that we'll reflect on this decision and think it's one of the best we've made after your marriage proposal, of course. Our relationship is going to be my key priority. More than anything, I want us to pour all of our energy into it. Not just for you and I, but also for our children. The greatest gift we can give them is to show how men and women love each other, respect each other, and how to build a wonderful life with another person. I love you, I, you will always be my baby. I look forward to building a better relationship with you every day. P.S. I think I cut this short because I was crying about the past and laughing about the future. That's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> Darren and Lainey. Thank you very much for for joining us. That was uh, really lovely. <laughs> We're all crying. <laughs> <laughs> and Jennifer Cummins, thank you very much for joining Pleasure. us. And I just wanted to let you know that uh, Jennifer is uh, working on um, making families happy and she's interested in talking about recruitment right now. So if you'd like to <laughs> bail her up, um, she'd you be might not welcoming. You happy, but someone will be. You'll know someone who is. <laughs> That's right. Okay, thank you very much. Great. Thank you.